just thinking about our capacity and being okay yeah. with it changing, right? Which is ah 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 You don't have to though. You don't have to be like this. You don't have to be fat. You don't have to buy oversized furniture. You don't have to go to the gym. Go to the gym and lose weight. Oh, eat less. Fat phobia. Fat phobia. Gross. Gross fat phobia. How dare you? How, this is my new fat body. It's my second puberty. Don't you know? Like, oh, I can't fit in chairs, but I know if I go home, I can fit on the toilet. What are you talking about? What? That's ridiculous. That's craziness. That's so crazy. You're sitting here literally like bragging that you, you have chairs that can fit you, but nowhere else they can fit you. Here's sort of the double-edged sword of of really diving into the fat phobia and the way our society is structured around anti-fatness yeah. is that we free ourselves while becoming acutely aware of how much we are, not we are hated, but our fatness is hated. Yes. And people's fear yes. of being fat. I feel like when these people talk, it's a lot like the people in the red pill. They think they're so enlightened. They go, oh, yes, I completely now understand the way it is. Women do suck. Women are terrible and they should be in the kitchen. It's probably something like that. Like you're becoming aware and there might be some truths to this in the sense of like, yeah, you guys are being discriminated against in society. You will not be able to walk upstairs properly. If you go into a building and the elevator is under construction, you can't get where you're going. That becomes aware in the same way that if you were in the red pill, you might say things like, yes, working out is going to make me more attractive. Making money is going to make me more attractive. Like these end goals, these like end goals are great, but like how you get there and how you like <laughs> the road to which you, you, you decide to get there is flawed, right? Like I agree that you guys are definitely annexed from society. I agree that people don't think it's a good idea to be fat, but like how you got there, the line to which you determine these things is flawed. Why do people not want to be fat? Oh, because being fat in society is seemed as a terrible, disgusting, like moral failing. And that if you have too much weight on your body, people think it's negative. No, it's because it is negative. It's because it actually is a debuff to your health. Like if you were sitting there with the Apple watch, the new Apple watch, they would be ticking down at 0.1% seconds every second of your health bar. Okay. Cause that new Apple watch has a health bar now. And it would tick down because you guys are so incredibly obese, so incredibly unhealthy that the, the entire process of your, your lifespan is going to be deteriorated based off the amount of fat on your body. So don't sit there and try to make it seem like we're not justified in our decisions to not be fat. You can you can most definitely think that you're right on this, but uh, you're going to, you know, it's, it's a weird way of justifying the, your existence, dude. Just keep it a buck. It's not a good thing to be fat. I mean, obviously, they're never going to. You have an entire podcast called Fat Joy. Man, I love fat podcasts, dude. Listening to these people talk about their experiences is got to be one of the most, it's like, it's so cringy. And if you know anything about me, I love cringe. I like marinate myself in the sweet juices of cringe. It's so, so, so satisfying to me to hear these people go fat tax and I can't do anything for myself. I physically am being disabled by society, even though I know I can like literally at any point in time, eat less and go to the gym and I would be better. Nope, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm never gonna take accountability. It's it's like my favorite thing, dude. Right? Yeah. So it's, you know, so you, you get free, but then you also yeah. are hyper aware. Yeah. And it's a what hard tension oh. to hold. Mm -hmm. Like holding both of those is really weird and complicated. Sorry to interrupt. I don't like the host of this show because she almost never engages. And when she does engage, like she'll let the guests talk for like 20 minutes at a time, which is okay, I guess, if that's what your job is, right? But I feel like there should be some injections, some type of like, oh, let's go into that a little bit more. Let's talk about that. Let's hear, why do you think this? Never anything like that. The person would literally just talk for 20 minutes and then the other person will go, eventually it will become so dry because this person's like, I don't know, talking about their entire life story. Like I listened to the Jordan Underwood version and dude, it was absolutely atrocious hearing this woman go from A to B to B to C to C back to A. And it was like consistently like nowhere, like the, the entire, the Jordan Underwood's thought processes have absolutely no consistency. They're not linear at all. Like she'll be talking about, Hey, I went through college. 
I was really discriminated against because I was trying to be a ballerina, but they told me that they didn't need any fat ballerinas. Hashtag, it's fat phobia. Hashtag, they told me I wasn't physically capable of doing this exercise. And I'm just thinking, what the fuck are we talking about right now? Because like 10 seconds earlier, you were literally talking about how you were trying to get a job and you couldn't get that job. But that was like five years after you graduated from school. So what is the point of this comment right now? Anyway. I really wish that the, the the host here would have some type of pushback. I understand that this this like particular podcast that they got here, the Fat Joy podcast, <laughs> is obviously designed for fat people and like talking about the discrimination, the the abilities of fat people and how great it is to be fat, I guess. But I would really hope that there would be more interjection. This person, what I really hate is that even if you fully believe this, can you at least try to have some type of pushback on anything they say? Like, hey, even if you don't agree, it would be really beneficial to go, okay, hey, before we go any further, can you delve into this a little bit more? Why do you believe this? How'd you get to this point? Like, why do you believe that not being able to fit on toilets is a good thing? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Why Why isn't that never something that these people talk on? Like, I was just like, no, no, so that, right. that was a... Yeah. That was a perfect add-on. It is a yeah. weird tension to hold. And I just I feel like some people, like, when they talk to other people, they're afraid that they might be seen as rude or, like, they might be interjecting and they might consider that to be, like, an injustice in some way. And get the fuck over it, dude. If your entire job is to be a podcast host, you have to get used to the fact that even if this person thinks that you're not doing a good job or, like, they think that you're fucking an asshole or something like that, who fucking cares? What? Stop trying to appease people so much to the where you're letting them talk for 20, 30 minutes at a time and you interject nothing to it. And get, you get no benefit out of that at all, especially when it's a podcast, dude. And I feel like the host of the show does that I want to say for folks listening, understand that you are holding that tension yes. when you take up space as a fat person and live in fat joy. Just understand that. And I always tell them. You should, be, you should understand that when you're in this, like... <laughs> When you're in this area of fatness, okay, and you're talking about taking up space and you're talking about the tension of understanding that you're taking up more space than another person, you have to also understand that this shit is negatively affecting you, right? Like other people are looking at you and going, damn, this woman is real deal taking up two seats on the bus right now. That's ridiculous. There's a grandma standing up and you should be putting, you should be putting yourself you should 100% be looking at that grandma going, I really am taking up two spots, man. I can't believe this grandma is actually more physically capable than me. Something that I think it should I'm like, just because this weight loss happened without you intentionally losing it, we don't have any, again, statistics to say that this is going to stay off. So I hate when they always, they always have to bring up this point like, oh, you did lose weight? Oh, you successfully lost weight and made yourself healthier? Well... That doesn't actually mean anything. That doesn't mean that they're going to actually, you're going to keep the weight off. Like, there's no scientific evidence. There's no fact. There's nothing in literature that tells you that if you lose this weight, it's going to stay off. But, I mean, there's a high probability that you might keep it off for, like, five years. Which, in all honesty, five years is a pretty good amount of time. Especially if you were just not going to do anything at all. And you were just going to be in a sedentary lifestyle for your entire life anyway. So, five years is literally just a benefit to you, even if you do gain back that weight. What is even the point of this question? Like, to even say that, what you're basically saying is like, oh, you bettered yourself? Well, don't look at it as anything other than that because you're going to gain back that weight anyway. You're going to be back with us anyway, so fuck you. I don't care that you think that you're better than me because you lost 400 fucking pounds. It's such a terrible way of trying to look at this shit to sit there and try to, like, throw people down because they decided to lose weight instead of, like... It's like when, when people can't take the compliments, you know, like, oh, wow, you're really, stop, stop, really? Stop. No, come on, dude. Why are you saying that? No, come on. Seriously. Keep complimenting me. Keep complimenting me. It's like one of those things, dude. Can't this person just take the W? Can't that person just take the W without you going like, yeah, nah, it's not really going to do anything. It's like when you, when you have a friend and they buy a car for the first time and they're like, you're like, bro, check out my car, check my new car. It's so nice. Right. And you go like, Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, it is a it is a piece of shit. It is a piece of shit. And it, it looks really ugly. And the window don't roll down, right? The window don't roll down, dude. Uh, but yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. I mean, it is a piece of junk. I mean, you're probably paying, like, well, how much you pay for that? Like, $5, dude? I mean, but yeah, it'll get you where you're going. Like, it's backhanded compliments, dude. To sit there and go like, oh, yeah, you lost weight. But, I mean, I don't really mean shit since you're going to gain it back anyway. The fuck is wrong with you? So, this might be just as temporary as any other one. So just, like, your body is has changed, full stop. It's not better. It, the well, I mean, it depends on what you mean by better, dude. You're, these people's definitions, these people's definitions are so incredibly insane to me. 
better is obviously super subjective depending on what you're talking about but if we're talking about health which obviously we fucking are okay which, which is the entire context of losing weight like somebody says i lost weight it's like usually one of two things it's a cosmetic issue for a lot of people and it's a health issue for some people and sometimes it's both okay now when you lose weight and you go you're so much healthier yeah fucking duh obvious fucking lead hey you lost weight hey you look way better yeah that's obvious too, right? But most people, when they lose weight, they're going for, I'm being healthier. So when you say that doesn't necessarily mean you're healthier is bullshit. I don't know what metric you're using to judge health by if you don't consider somebody that lost like 40, 50, 60, 100, 200 pounds, not a health gain. You you have a completely definition. You have a completely nuanced and crazy definition of what health is. That's really hard to internalize in a world that like it is better in a smaller body. You yeah. have more access to things. It's not about just accessing things. Like yes, your life will be improved that now you can walk upstairs, right? You shouldn't thinking about like here's the thing. I am not here to shit on people that have disabilities. Like if you have a disability, you don't have legs or whatever the fuck, it happens, right? It sucks. It's not a good thing. Should I think I think these people 100% should have a world to which they have the ability to still navigate it without without any types of um, um, hindrances involved, as few as, mu as much as possible, of course, right? I think that's where taxpayer money should be going, obviously. But what I know for sure is if you have the ability to use your legs and you're literally not using those things because you're sedentary or you've gained weight to such a degree that you cannot use those things anymore, that is fundamentally different compared to a guy that was born without legs or somebody that had an accident that can no longer walk or maybe has some kind of like disease or something like that these things are two very different things okay and i'm not saying fat people shouldn't be able to use the accessibility devices obviously if they're there i think you should use them but if you have the ability to use your legs why the fuck wouldn't you use your fucking legs get in shape so you can walk upstairs should be like the most obvious statement of all time the fact that you even have to say those words using your legs should be used like you should be able to use your legs that is a i don't know why that's a crazy statement or to sit there and be like oh you're gonna have a better time in society yeah no fucking shit you're gonna have a better time almost anywhere to have the ability to use your fucking legs in an optimal way i hope so dude worlds that like it is but that's really hard to internalize in a world that like, it is better in a smaller body. You have more access to things. You're also healthier. I just want to talk about that, though. You're, you're also way healthier. You don't have to worry about as many health complications. You get social acceptance. You get praise. You get, you know, admittance to things that you can't get into. If you're I love that she, she talks about things like this as if they're not things that people already have. Like, what you're, what you're basically saying is like, yes, you get perks of being thinner, like being accepted and being able to navigate the world. She didn't talk about health, which I don't know why you wouldn't talk about health. I mean, we all know why she didn't, and this is not, is not, is not good for her to talk about that because if she admitted that there's health gains from losing weight, that would like completely demolish her entire thought process and like people would shit on her. So obviously she can't talk about that, which is really sad. Um, these people, honestly speaking, dude, They've put themselves in such a bracket that if they ever decided to lose weight ever, or if they ever decided to say something that was different, their blowback would be insane. And I always think it's okay to have fundamental beliefs. It's okay to think about things like, I truly believe that this should be a good thing, but you should always have a way out, right? You should always have a way to back away from it as much as you can. Like for instance, I know I love capitalism, right? I love the ability to make money and use your money how you see fit, right? But if there was something else, if there was an economic structure that was superior compared to capitalism and it was more fair and it was more equal and things such and so forth, I would choose that. And that's what I mean. So like you should have these like, you know, the, these stems, these roots in whatever you think is like socially correct and things that you think are correct. But don't be afraid to preference these things with, well, if there was something better or if it was like, if something was like more OK, I would do that. You understand? So, yeah. Or like when somebody says something like, do you think this guy should go to jail? I would always go, well, I think this guy should go to jail if these allegations are true. If this stuff was like all correct, um, let's let it play out. You know what I'm talking about? Stuff like that. Instead of just outright saying, no, I think this guy's a fucking maniac. I think that he's a fucking whatever. And I think he should go to jail, right? And then it comes out two months later that the guy was exonerated from all charges or whatever the fuck. I mean, obviously this depends on the scenario, but too many people go all or nothing on things and then they die on the hill because they have to. They have no other choice to die on the hill. Otherwise, their entire, like, these people will literally defend to the ends of the earth 
that being fat is not a negative health complication. And because of that, it is a hill they have to die on. So when anybody brings this up in conversations, which is one of the reasons why they never debate anybody or talk to anybody outside these circles, because if they did, they would be defending things that are so incredibly crazy that if, they, if another person even gave them a slight little bit of pushback, the defense would be crazy. Like, they, they would have to. They would have to defend that shit. Otherwise, they would be demonized from all their organizations. They're in a larger body. There is a huge amount. Like, our world is built for smaller bodies. Yeah, well, yes. Fucking duh. What a fucking course. I don't even know why this is even a statement to be said. The world is built for smaller bodies. Dude, forget about society for a second, okay? You, your body, if you, it depends on how, what you believe in, right? Obviously, if you believe in the great spaghetti monster in the sky, Jesus, God, whatever, whoever um, deity you believe in, then you believe that that dude put you on this earth in design for what he thought was like nature, right? Or if you believe in like um, evolution, right? Your body is specifically designed to be able to navigate the environment. Now, granted, there's some fucked up shit there. Like our feet are like, I think our feet are like caught in between two different things. Like we had monkey feet for a long time and they kind of transitioned to being able to walk on the floor, which is why our knees like go this way instead of that way. And our feet has like a, a feet have like a whole bunch of tendons because we used to be able to climb on trees or whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's a whole convoluted thing. But the point I'm making is you being fat, it's a privilege to be in a society where you don't even have to worry about climbing mountains, you know, jumping up into a tree because a fucking anaconda was coming at you. And you, you know what I'm talking about? You had to run from the anaconda or there was some kind of like antelope that was trying to eat you when you had to run through the plains of Africa or whatever the fuck antelopes are from. The point I'm making is it is a privilege to be able to be in a society where you walk down the street and there isn't a mountain lion that's trying to munch you down. And I mean, granted, there's homeless guys. And they might be trying to solicit you for drugs or maybe they want to suck you off unsolicitedly, recreationally, whatever. That's obviously an issue. But the fact that you are able to exist obese in society is a privilege. It's 100% a privilege. If you were in nature, you would be done. It would be over for you. 100%. There's no doubt about it. So I'm sick of these people saying the world and they really mean society isn't built for you. No fucking shit. Nothing is built for you, dude. You guys are literally putting yourself in the most unreasonable bracket of accessibility and then complaining about it. There is a huge amount. Like our world is built for smaller bodies and it does not. That's like somebody complaining that the roads are built for cars and that you can't like, <laughs> I don't know, like the, the roads are built for cars. And so you feel really upset that you can't like, I don't know, like sled down them while cars are coming up. Like obvious fucking league roads are built for cars. To accommodate larger bodies. And basically the world says, well, if you want access to this, just lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But what's wrong with that? We say that about anything. Like if you want access to drive, you have to get a license. If you want access to the grocery store, you know, you have to have money. Like what do you, there's access to everything. You think like. What is he, what is he, what is even this thought process, huh? Like, oh yeah, you want to be able to walk upstairs without being out of breath and actually be able to walk upstairs? Well, you're going to have to lose weight. What are you supposed to do then? Like, are you just going to complain and fucking flip off the, the stairs because they're, are you going to flip off the guy that created stairs? Like, what do you do in that situation? You're, what you're actually saying is so incredibly stupid. There are barriers to entry across any aspect at all. You understand? Like, if you want to know how to read a book, guess what you have to know how to do? Read. There's prerequisites to everything. So if you're sitting there and you're going, oh, well, you know, the world is made for thin people and it just really sucks that there's no accommodation for larger bodies. And like, dude, it's such a dumb talking point. You're just saying shit. And basically the world says, well, if you want access to this, just lose weight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's true. And it's horrible. It's not horrible. Okay, dude. <laughs> Why is it horrible? Why? It's like that for everything, though. You want to be able to drive, you have to have a license. You want to do anything, like, oh, man. All right, dude, whatever, man. There's, there's no point of even and justifying this. why I started this podcast. <laughs> to just be like, nope, that doesn't get to be okay. But you're not saying anything. You're just saying, I don't like this. Therefore, I think it's wrong. No justification. You're just, you're just complaining. That's all it is. And don't get me wrong, it's fine to complain, but I feel like there's better ways to complain. Like, I don't know, get a fucking boyfriend or a girlfriend and then complain to them about how the roads are unsafe and then every time you drive down the street, there's a pothole or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's fine. But like, why are you complaining on the internet about things that are so incredibly rudimentary as like being able to walk down the street is inefficient for you. Therefore, society is to blame. Dude, 
You guys are literally complaining about shit and have no idea how to justify it. So, and you, there's no pushback either, which is one of the reasons I hate podcasts like this. Like, this, you're saying something and there's not like, well, can we think about that for a second? Like, why do we think there's a barrier to entry to things like this? Can we talk about that for a second? There's nothing. There's no pushback at all. All you guys are doing are just like yes queening each other over and over again. That doesn't get to be the only way. It's, it's not about it doesn't get to be the only way. It's like such a terrible way of thinking about it. It's like that one girl, Kelsey, when I made that video and I was telling her that, you know, how to improve her chances of getting a boyfriend. You remember that video? And then she made that response video and she said that I shouldn't vote. <laughs> but she was sitting there and her claim was the world shouldn't be like this. I should be able to get a boyfriend because or whatever the fuck her reason was. And I said, that's fine that you think the world should be like that. But ultimately, that's not going to help you because... We live in this world, right? If you want to think about fairy tale land and think about how things should be or could be, that's fine. I'm sure that's very productive in other circles. But if we're talking about getting a relationship or how to navigate in fucking society and your solution is things shouldn't be this way, they should be different. Dude, what is that going to help you with? Huh? Let's be realistic for a second. If you are struggling to walk and you think the solution is going to Congress and advocating for like treadmills across the fucking floor that push you everywhere, that's never going to fucking happen. That's incredibly inefficient in the same way that like if a woman or that girl Kelsey was to complain that she can never get boyfriends because guys don't find her attractive and her solution is things shouldn't be that way. I think that women or whoever should just be able to find love regardless. What am I supposed to do with that? That's not going to help you. That does nothing for you. Let's stay. Let's stay in reality. Let's talk about what you can do now. Let's talk about how we can change your life, not change the world around you. Do you know how unbelievable it is to say we should change the world instead of going, I should change myself for the world? Because the world isn't going to change. Now, granted, there are things that we can do to improve it. But to sit there and say that we need entire systemic changes, like changes in the structure of society itself, to try to better accommodate fat people is ludicrous. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It, you can't do that. You, you're literally asking for something outside the realm of possibilities and then just not doing anything about it because there's literally nothing you could do. You're just complaining. Hashtag Fat Joy Podcast. And we know that dieting is one of the biggest predictors of eating disorders. You know, I love this claim. I really love this claim of saying diet is one of the biggest predictors. And I really, un I, I, I want to know what they mean. This is like, oh man, get me on the fucking panel. I would love to ask them what they mean by eating disorder, okay, and ED, because eating disorders are very serious, okay, but it's like a very weird thing of somebody going ED in the sense of like, this guy eats a lot of chicken breast, right? This guy eats a lot of chicken breast and he drinks a lot of water, ED. That's not an ED, okay? It doesn't, <laughs> not every, just because somebody contours their diet in a particular way doesn't mean it's an eating disorder. Like, I understand that you could put it like that because you think that it's like a far-fetched idea that somebody could think that dictating their diet in a particular direction to center nutrition rather than just eating whatever the fuck they want could be considered that, but it's not, okay? You understand that. So I would love a definition. I would love a definition. Like, as soon as you say that, be like, by the way, let me preference that with this is what I think this is. Instead of just saying, you know, losing weight or weight loss, dieting is going to be a predictor. By the way, you guys, if you're going to consider a person that contours their diet so they lose weight as an ED, you also have to admit that you have an ED. Being obese means fundamentally that you have a miscommunication, a misidea of what food is actually supposed to do, and you're consuming too much of it. Okay, that's what it is. Can we just say that? No, no, can't say that. Nope, too much, too much factual statements. So kids who diet or are restricting their food intake are more likely to develop eating disorders. And, and what's the alternative? Like if your kid is obese, do you just let them be obese? Like you, it's a lose-lose, right? At least if they lose weight, they'll be healthier. Have you ever seen kids that can't do things? Like it's, it's one of the most tragic things. The, I remember when I was growing up, I don't think the obesity epidemic was as bad when I was growing up. I only had a few kids that were like really obese, but I had this one kid, his name was Jose. He would literally be so fat. He played Santa Claus for one of the elementary school Christmases. That's how fat he was, which is really weird. Like he was, Jose, his name was Jose. I think you can understand where this guy's from. He was a brown Santa Claus, which is fine. It's completely fine. He was also like four foot two. I don't know. I've never seen a Santa Claus that wasn't six foot. 
Anyway, dude, it didn't matter. The point I'm making is this dude, if we went out to recess, he would just sit down. That's all he could do. He could not participate in games like tag. He couldn't run around the, the mulch fields. He couldn't do shit. He had to sit there and look at everybody else having fun. And I know this is not something that a lot of people want to talk about, but dude, if you're a child and you can't participate in things like being a child, like being able to run around and, and talk to people and like, communicate and even to a certain degree, like fight, you know what I'm talking about? Like things like this. Even though a lot of people might consider these things to be like far-fetched nowadays because half the kids, like I would say more than half the kids nowadays don't even use their legs or on their fucking phones all day, which is very, very sad. But it is such an important activity thing to be able to run around with other kids and do fun shit as a child. You can't do that. If you're very obese, you just gotta have to sit there all day and look at everybody else having fun while you're just constantly in depression. Wouldn't it be better to have that kid go on some type of like calorie deficit to lose some weight it's not a good thing to have a child that has high blood pressure before they're 10 years old it's not a good thing to have a kid that has early onset diabetes because you you can't say no it's not a good thing right so when you say you know oh restrictive diets for children are bad i don't disagree with you i'm not disagreeing with you in the sense of like it is not a good thing to restrict food from children. I agree, but the alternative is not restricting food for children and they eat so much they become obese. So it's a lose-lose regardless. At least you're correcting the mistake of one side though. You understand? It's not supposed to be good. Like I remember I was listening to this conversation of this guy and he said some shit like, I don't think it's a good idea to have armed security guards or police officers at school. And I don't disagree with that. I went to school and there were tons of police officers that were commissioned by the school in Boston, right? Like there were Boston police officers that were commissioned to be in school because kids at school I went to would have guns, knives. They would just have all this shit on them at all times. I would have, I remember being in school and having like four kids pull guns on me, not even joking. And it wasn't even like they were threatening me. They were just like, hey, you want to see something? And they pulled it out. Okay. It happened. And I'm not saying it's a, it's obviously a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. And I'm not saying it's a good thing that the, 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 these particular like, police officers should be there. I don't think they should be there. I think schools should be safe enough to where you don't have to have these things. But that is besides the fucking point. If the school isn't safe enough to where you need like metal detectors and armed police officers all across the school, it is what it is. I'm not going to complain that things shouldn't be this way. I agree with you. Things shouldn't be this way. But guess what? That's the way it is. So when you say things like it shouldn't be this way or we shouldn't be doing these things, I get it. I understand. But there's a difference between things, how things should be and how they are. Um, and for the kids who don't develop eating disorders, they're still navigating a lot of shame in their bodies, fear around bodies changing, around weight gain. It's a lose-lose regardless, dude. Kids are gonna get bullied for being fat and they're gonna get bullied for losing weight because they have to, because they were fat. So it's a lose-lose regardless. A belief that if their body is bigger than their peers, that's a negative thing. It's 100% a negative thing, especially, man, dude, it's like, to, the, to put the music in this too, to try to make it seem like this is like, oh no, it's not that big of a deal. It's completely fine. Dude, if you're a kid and you can't participate in kids stuff, it's not fun. It's not fun. And I understand, I get it. This woman is like approaching it from the, the sense of like understanding and like, you know, she has her own way of thinking about it. I don't think she's a bad person. I don't. Most people have like the same beliefs. I bet 99% of the things that I agree, she agrees with. Okay. It's just like the process to which they get there is different. I believe obviously kids shouldn't be bullied. Uh, but she believes that the process to which getting things, it's like unbelievable. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I believe that they shouldn't be bullied and she believes that, but her process is we shouldn't be fat shaming or the kids shouldn't be acting in particular types of way. It's ignoring the reality of the situation. It's not going to change it. You're just, you're just saying shit at that point. Um, I think we see the relationship with movement start to shift. You know, we were talking yeah. about the kids on the soccer field where it's fun and it's play to a relationship with movement that is based more in diet culture where adolescents start engaging in movement more around the idea of burning calories or trying to avoid weight gain. Um, yeah, obviously as you get older, and if you're like really deep into sports, you're going to have to have like a really good understanding of diet or at least have somebody that can contour your diet that you don't have to like. There was uh, Ronnie Coleman, right? He knew nothing about his diet. He knew nothing about the drugs he was taking. He just knew that the person that told him to do it was right. So if that guy said, Ronnie, you got to eat this four or five times a day and you do that for a next month, you're going to be good. You take this and you do it at this time, you're good. You don't have to think about it. If you have somebody that can do that for you, that's great. But 
Most people don't have that luxury. Most people have to do it for themselves, which is fine, by the way. I mean, if you have to learn it yourself, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with being more knowledgeable about things, okay? But if you can take that responsibility and cede it to somebody else, if that's what you want to do, that's fine too. If we're talking about somebody here, okay? I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about, dude. Engaging movement, yeah. When you get older, you're going to have to learn more about that, especially if you want to do sports, right? High school sports is fundamentally different compared to elementary school sports. Elementary school sports, you can still do that shit with other girls, right? Boys and girls are pretty much the same thing, like at that age. If you're like fucking under 10 or 11, you're good. Your like, girls and boys can do the same shit. There's competitiveness. But once you start getting older... And once you start seeing the bigness of certain people, dude, then you start realizing maybe we should annex these people, separate people out, you know, because obviously fucking Harold is way like six foot two and weighs 250 pounds and Cheryl is 120 pounds and she's five foot four. It's not the same thing. That's why we annex sports, right? And the same thing could be said with dieting and exercising, right? I, I, I Obviously, you're going to have to contour your diet depending on the sport that you're in. So I don't even understand the point of this, this idea. Like, what are we even talking about? Are we upset that people mid-max diets to to contour whatever sport that they're in fucking duh fucking duh dude what are you fucking talking about more around the idea of burning calories or trying to avoid weight gain um but i think the you know kind of core of it is that they lose trust in themselves and their body what are you talking about man at what age are you talking about? If you're a child, I don't even think children know about... Dude, children don't even know about making their own beds. And I'm not saying that children aren't burdened by things. I'm not saying that. Obviously, there are plenty of kids that have a ton of responsibility put on them by parents that they shouldn't have that be put on them, right? But gradually, as you become more and more of an adult, you have more and more responsibility placed on you, okay? So, like, as you get older, you're gonna have to understand... Like, okay, I'm gaining weight. This is not efficient for whatever I'm going to be doing here. Therefore, I should be losing the weight. Or maybe it actually might be beneficial to gain weight. Like, if you're a, a football player, it might be beneficial for you to carry an extra 20 or 30 pounds as long as it doesn't negatively affect you on the field. Do you know how many big-ass dudes I knew that was, like, 250, 270 that could run like they were, like, 150? I knew a lot of fucking dudes like that. A lot of strong guys that completely had no problem demolishing people on the field that were... Seeing kids that were playing football, okay, in high school, and these kids weighed 120 pounds, 150 pounds, right? And then there was another kid that was that same height, but he was double or like a double and some change more than that weight. And seeing that dude just completely obliterate all the people on the field, it's life-changing to see that shit, okay? So it depends, honestly, what your sport is. There are justifications for losing weight and there are justifications for gaining weight. And that's what comes when you get older. You, it's your responsibility to do that and understand where you need to be. Oh, I hate that. They lose pain. Um, but I think the, you know, kind of core of it is that they lose trust in themselves and their body. I don't think it's losing trust. I just think it's understanding more. What are you fucking talking about, dude? Like once you start getting an understanding of what your body can and cannot do and adjusting that accordingly, what is why okay whatever dude. and this woman just going oh my god i hate that you hate what what is it what she didn't even say anything she said literally nothing she's not actually making a claim at all she just said that people lose trust in their bodies because they have to gain more weight or lose more weight depending on the sport what the fuck are you talking about what do you mean you hate that what are you talking about what does that have to do with anything oh uh, i hate that dude, get i know because then know. you spend the next decades if at all trying to find that trust again what is the trust what are you talking about if you eat four thousand calories worth of pizza rolls and then you feel terrible the next day and then you think oh i lose trust in my body because i shouldn't have felt bad because i ate the fucking 44 pizza rolls what are you talking about man it's cause and effect we have this idea it's like sucking a bbc and then having meat stains all over your lips and going oh i don't trust Oh, I can't believe this. I can't, I don't trust this anymore. What are you talking about, man? This dominant culture that we're just going to fix ourselves. We're going to do this big thing and then it'll be done. I, there is no other person. It depends on what you mean by fix ourselves. If there is something about you that you cannot fix, like I'll give you a good example. Look how long my nose is, okay? That's a giant nose, okay? That's a big nose. I remember when I was going to high school, people used to think that I was Jewish. A lot of people used to think I was Jewish. And I remember one time I was in uh, lunch and I was eating a ham sandwich. And this dude was like, dude, what are you? Why are you eating that? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, oh, you're not supposed to eat Jew. You're not supposed to eat 
ham. And I was like, why? He's like, cause you're Jewish. And I was like, no, I'm not Jewish. He's like, bro, but aren't you circumcised and have a big nose? And I was like, okay, dude, like that's listen, bro. A lot of people are circumcised, right? A lot of people are fucking circumcised. That's like the prominent thing that people do in America is circumcise their children. Okay. I didn't have a fucking choice in the fact that my penis was circumcised and I was removed like 20% of my skin when I was like, I don't know. I didn't decide that. I didn't decide it. If I had the choice, I would have gone back and told the doctor, no, don't do that. Don't take away his penis skin. Let me decide that as I become an adult, but it is what it is, right? I've accepted the fact that my penis has reduced skin, but it's more aesthetic for that purpose. I've never met a woman that's ever, I've never met a woman in my entire life that told me that she prefers a uncircumcised penis compared to a circumcised penis. So it's a big up for me. And I've been told that when you have more foreskin, your penis can grow more. I've never had that problem. So, you know, here I am big meated and um, aesthetically pleasing as well. The doctor did a good job. I'm not gonna lie to you. Anyway. Your, if your claim is sitting here going like, I don't even know what this fucking claim. I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. you. There's no other person to, that, that could fix you, especially when it comes to weight loss. Like, unless you could cede your responsibility to somebody else, which most people are not going to do because you're a full anonymous, autonomous person and you're an adult. Dude, it's up to you. You are the one ultimately that is responsible for yourself. I don't know who else can we can fucking you can blame before that. Like, if your argument is like, I didn't gain weight and it was it, I didn't gain weight on purpose. It wasn't my fault. Who else then? Who 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 did it? Who did it to you? Please tell me. Huh? Okay. The culture that we're just going to fix ourselves. We're going to do this big thing and then it'll be done. Oh, and yeah. I'm going to be yes, healed please. and I'll be able to like <laughs> forgive, forget, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it's no. so much more messier than it's, that. It's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, obviously. Like you, there's there's some details that you left out, but that fundamentally is what it is. In the sense of like you, you're unhealthy, you're obese, then you lose the weight. Now, granted, you might still have the effects of that obesity on you to a certain degree. Like maybe you still have joint pain because you had that weight on you. Maybe you still have digestive issues because the amount of food that you were eating before. Maybe you have all these issues, but you cut your losses at least. And you were able to recover to a certain degree to where now you are relatively compared to where you were way more healthy. Okay. So that's, that's really what it comes down to. So, so just be okay with the mess, you know, be in it. And um, grief is interesting. It comes in waves. It's, it's just- It's, it's just so crazy to say like, oh yeah, it's really complicated to lose weight. It's really hard. It's like, it's not even like sustainable. So it's just really nice to just stay here, like fat and obese. It's really nice. It's so good to just accept that I can't do anything about it, even though I know there is something I can do about it. Just so, it's so, such an interesting, um, it's a part of being human, you know? <laughs> and I just say, you know, lean into the uncomfortable feeling and then lean out. Yeah. You don't have to stay there. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. What? Is, what? If you're uncomfortable in your body and your solution is just to accept it and then like roll with the waves of certain days, like, oh, certain days you feel really uncomfortable in your body and other days you're not really thinking about it too much because maybe you don't have to deal with the problems of it. That's fine, I guess, if that's what you want to do. But dude, you can lose weight. It's not impossible. I'm sick of these people sitting there going like, oh, I'm fat. It is what it is. No, it's not. No, it's not. Stop it. You don't have to. You don't have to be fat. Yeah, it's so hard. Diet culture is everywhere. It's so insidious. And as much as we want to protect our kids from it, there's no way to do that. Our kids walk out of our homes and they are going to be bombarded with messages of diet culture. What are we talking about right now, dude? What? what so you're saying that it's a, it's a negative thing that kids know about diet culture. Again, I really want to I really want to know what they mean by diet culture, bro. Because are you telling me when a kid is walking to school, just walking to school is already going to be a reminder of diet culture because if you're fat, you're going to feel the effects of that. You're going to school itself, you have to walk upstairs, maybe you don't have an elevator access, maybe you don't have maybe people around you are bullying you cuz you're fat. Things happen. So, yes, ev a fucking course. And to sit there and say it's a negative thing, Yes, I know it's a negative thing, but a lot of things that are negative have positive outcomes at the end of them, okay? And I know a lot of people don't like hearing that. Like, it took us a long time. The history of human humankind has been defined by terrible, disgusting things. But the outcome of those things usually ends up in a good direction. Like, we had to go through a, hundred, a couple hundred years of terrible, disgusting slavery, and the outcome of that is relatively everybody nowadays is relatively free and you know we have great access to things like that like i'm not saying that slavery was a good thing obviously i'm not you know i'm gonna take the very very crazy take here and thinking that slavery was bad but the point i'm making is 
it took us a long time to get through that to have the outcomes we do nowadays right so yes diet you could you could consider diet culture to be a bad thing but the outcome of that is to teach people that weight loss is okay and being fat is not so good i mean you can be fat which is completely fine if that's what you want to do but you're literally preaching about you're you're preaching about being fat especially to children as a good thing they are going to be bombarded with messages of diet culture and anti-fat bias i think what we can do is make sure just accept it i mean it is what it is you're literally saying that there's nothing else we can do about it so that is that is a solution dude just make sure you teach your kids to be tolerant i guess i don't know if you want to treat teach your kids to anti-fat bias and bullshit like that i mean you can do it dude i'm not here to tell people how they should and should not parent their kids but this is fucking obviously not the best information to teach your kids what are you gonna tell them like dunkin donuts is obviously the same as eating four chicken breasts go ahead i guess or that when they are with us it's a safe place where their bodies will never be shamed dude okay look it is to have the experiences that you do when you're a child are so incredibly important because like you can be at home okay you can have a protective mother or protective father and people at your house that can comfort you and things like that i'm not saying those things are inherently bad but oftentimes i hear parents say things like I am super protective of my kid and they don't uh, they don't think that it's inherently a bad thing and I can see why but in the same way that in the in the in the apple right the apple of eden and the the the, the garden the holy garden with adam and eve right there's a snake there's always a fucking snake and sometimes you're the snake sometimes when you are that overprotective parent and you are making sure that your child has all everything they need and you're perfectly contouring their life and you're never making it uncomfortable for them and there's never anything that they have to do to enhance themselves what you're actually doing is that in the process of making their life easier and more majestic or whatever the fucking words you want to use that are synonymous with that you are making them have a harder life as an outcome when they become an adult you understand too many people nowadays have absolutely no social life have no friends have nothing because they grew up in a very very controlled environment and they never had to worry about anything and so on and so forth and i'm not saying that kids should have to deal with terrible disgusting things but it's completely appropriate for a kid to have responsibility and a child to be doing a lot of stuff right like having friends communicating with people maybe going on the soccer team yes there's going to be bullying yes there's going to be people that are going to say terrible things to your kids but your kid should have the ability to bounce back from that hear that intake it and then you know what i'm talking about D deal with it instead of just never having those experiences because like when you're a kid things hit a lot harder than they do when you're an adult but you if you've never had those experiences you're gonna crumble as an adult uh, absolutely i've literally seen people that have had mental breakdowns because somebody called them a name that's not good that's not a good thing dude people are gonna call you names a lot you just gotta have to roll with the punches and if your solution is they should never be shamed my kids are always gonna have safe things like i'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing those things but you should also be understanding that they're gonna have to deal with that stuff regardless and um it might just be a better solution to have your kids be responsible enough and teach them ways to where they can deal with that stuff instead of never having them deal with it at all where their choices in food will never be shamed yeah that's terrible that's fucking terrible so 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 if your kid was like bob bob i really want to eat fruit roll-ups tonight i really want to for breakfast lunch and dinner i want to eat fruit roll-ups and you told me that i can eat whatever i want and then you also told me that it was okay to eat because you're not going to shame me so what you're doing is you're just setting yourself up for failure because you just told your kid that you he's all right to eat whatever the fuck he wants for roll-ups yeah dude whatever bro you want to body slam like 80 of them go ahead dude body slam 80 of them and pop tarts go ahead body slam that shit do you see how unreasonable that is fuck no what you are an adult you're supposed to contour your kids diets for them i don't care that you want to eat fruit roll-ups for fucking dinner what that's terrible you're gonna eat what i'm telling you to eat that's what it is you're gonna you're the parent you're the parent stop acting like kids don't know they don't fucking know how you talk to a five-year-old dude they don't know shit they're just sitting there and they just say things okay they just talk to you about things sometimes they just say shit okay i was talking to one i did and i remember i was talking to this kid and i was talking to this girl and i was like hey I, this girl was like oh my god david you remember that like we're matching today we're matching today because i had gray on and she had gray on this random five-year-old comes out of nowhere right i mean i knew him obviously and he was like you know that you know that one time like last week that I wore I wore all gray too. 
I wore a grade two, and my mom did it. My mom put it off for me, and she said that I was looking hits up. And I'm just thinking, cool, bro. You know, that's real fucking cool. I don't know what that has to do with anything with the conversation, but it's awesome that you think that. You know, it's cool, man. Kids just say shit. So if you're sitting here and you're ceding all of the responsibility on your kid to decide what they can and cannot eat, do you see how fucking dumb that shit is? Kids think they're like Spider-Man and shit, okay? Okay, anyway, bro. It's all right, man. Where they know that they're not going to be told that there's something wrong with them. Dumb. It's so and dumb. And it's so, inc it's so, it's so monstrously insidious. It's so, it's like, it's the illusion of I'm doing what's right for my kids. And I know this, my kid's going to know better. N no, nah, no, they don't. Nope. No, they don't. They're children. They're children. Chill. Uh, adore, uh, are in. I don't know why so many people nowadays have this misidea that children are, do you think like kids are just adults? Like you not, like, you know, kids do dumb shit, right? Like a lot, all the time, right? Like all the time. Why the fuck would it ever be different when it comes to food? Homes can be a place where they see fat bodies in positive ways. We can. Dude, these people have very weird ways of raising fucking kids. What are you like hyper-focused on your kids seeing fat bodies? What the fuck does that even mean? You're, like pictures of Tess Holiday on the wall? Make sure that we have books and artwork and i remember like a while ago it was like a thing to just raise your kid in a passive way like in instill good values into your child understanding the world and understanding consequences and things like that and now we're hearing parents go i'm making sure my kid knows about different bodies and understanding that fatness is beautiful and that everybody is the same what the fuck are you talking about where where are they ever gonna use this shit what the hell are you teaching them why? Why are you teaching them that shit? It's so weird. Let's read things and that are all fat positive so that- Why? Why? Bro, what's wrong with the hungry, hungry caterpillar? There's a space for them to be exposed to fat liberation that what? they're not gonna likely get outside of our home. Oh, yeah, for fucking obvious reasons. Weird. That's weird, dude. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah was feeling really lonely and sad and trapped and it really led me to be like okay i am so fed up of trying all these exercise routines all these diets all like i've I tried everything i tried is that, is that a reason to stop it though like you've tried everything and it never worked therefore you just never try ever again just giving up too many times i hear these people saying this straight up bullshit of like Oh, for so long I dieted. And then they go into it. They go, I was on crash diets. I literally ate nothing for four days. I went to the gym for nine hours. I don't know. Like, it just wasn't sustainable. No shit. No shit. It wasn't fucking sustainable. What the fuck were you doing? The hell is that? Didn't eat for days? Going to the gym for nine hours? Fucking duh. Anybody would fucking, anybody would rebound from that shit. Slow and steady, dude. Take your time. It's okay that things take time okay don't just dive into the fucking deep end and by the way even like major fitness influencers people that are like totally mid max their careers on looking aesthetically pleasing and have an amazing bodies and being healthy these people are not fasting for four days and they're not crash dieting and they're not fucking going to the gym for nine hours a day okay so even like why would you ever think that they have unrealistic standards like they they honestly believe that this shit is like they're saying something profound by oh it didn't work for me what you did was ridiculous Juice cleanses, sugar cleanse, um, going, going a whole year, paying a whole year in a bar studio to get the best body. See, this is what I'm fucking talking about. Like, these people are literally going to, like, the most extreme versions of how to lose weight. And then they're surprised that it doesn't work when what they're trying doesn't work for most, if, if not every single person that's ever done this shit. Quotation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Literally every new thing that would come, I would try. And I remember. Yeah, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that, dude? Why are you doing that? Stick to what you know and then do that. Just keep doing that. It's okay to take time. Don't fucking jump into shit and go, oh, this is this new diet that told me that I just shouldn't be eating breads and I should lick the bottom end of a bottle cap to get my sustenance and I should be looking out the window at the sun. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the next six months. I hope it works. I hope it fucking works. Even though there's no studies or anything like that. Like, that's what I'm hearing right now. You're just doing unrealistic shit. Then trying yeah, to make like it work. even exercises. I did spinning, kickboxing, Muay Thai, um, uh -huh. running. I ran a half marathon. 
that like there was all and, these... I mean these things are all like relatively okay you know I don't know it's just like the dieting that I'm seeing is like crazy for this things one. that I was that I've done and I never felt enough after doing all of that I did you feel enough after doing nothing though like what is the what is this point so you did a lot of things and you tried to better yourself and in the process of bettering yourself you felt no different but now because you're fat and you do none of those things you feel better okay i mean to each their own but should we preach it should we be preaching the message of do nothing stay sedentary feel good that like feeling so. of never feeling enough was really yeah. strong so that led me to be like okay I really need to get help. Like this is something yeah. it's not going to get fixed with seeing a nutritionist. I mean, probably agreed. Probably go to a therapist to try to I don't know. It sounds like a it sounds like a her problem instead of like a fat like problem. Like I saw many nutritionists when you tried all the diets and exercises. Yeah, so like it's a, it's it's not a good thing. Like don't try all of them. Just try something that works slow and steady. You can still have the same diet. Like I see people too often go, I'm going to go on these really ridiculous diet plans. I always tell people just eat what you're eating right now but just eat less of it and then keep contouring based off that you know instead of like people jumping in the deep end and going i'm gonna do keto i'm gonna do meat only i'm gonna do this and i'm not saying those things can't work for you but it's very it's very very uh seldom do i ever see people succeed in those things when they've eaten like this for their entire life 10 20 30 years of their life and suddenly they go from that to something very very different a lot of people it's a daunting task so so I always tell people, eat what you're eating now, just eat less of it, and then contour based off that, and cut out things when you know they're not good for you. Like, getting an understanding of nutrition is going to help you immensely compared to just going on regular diets. I'm not saying diets can't, like, I'm not saying diets can't help you. They can. If they work for you, they work for you. For most people, they're not going to. I saw many therapists, but they were not necessarily focused in eating disorders. I don't know if we can ever fully heal from diet culture while we are being harmed constantly by diet culture, but... Was there a moment you're like, oh, okay, I've gotten to where I want to be? Did you have a bit of an aha or a, a transition moment that you can remember? I think for me, it was deciding to have kids. Uh, you, you, you decided to not to lose weight or you decided to not be healthy because you decided to have kids? Damn. Damn, dude. If that's your thought process... Damn, damn, that's fucking terrible. So you decided, instead of being healthier, instead of losing weight, instead of trying to better yourself when you have kids, which kids are like really high, you know, like high energy, a lot of responsibility. I mean, they're literally, it's like life and death. Like you have to control everything. So instead of actually bettering yourself, you decided like, nah. Nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not losing any weight. I'm not, I'm going to be I'm going to be ridiculously unhealthy and then you decided to bestow that upon your kids? Huh, man, dude, that's that's tough. That's tough to hear, dude. That's real tough to hear. I don't care how much upbeat, you know, fucking terrible disgusting elevator music you got. That shit is tough. Oh yeah. Um I think when tough, I was man. pregnant, I was still seeing the same dietitian and told her throughout my pregnancy that I was only eating because I was pregnant and that once I gave birth, I was gonna go back to my eating disorder. And then I had these two little babies and was like, I'm eating everything. I don't give a fuck. I'm body slamming all this shit. Even though I know that these people, like here's the thing, okay? I'm not saying you can't enjoy your life while you have kids. That's fine. It is. It's completely fine. I mean, kids shouldn't be like the end of your world in the sense of like your life. Go ahead. Enjoy life. You know, whatever. Keep enjoying life. But it should be within the context of taking care of kids first and foremost, especially because these kids had no type of like they didn't decide this. Right. There was no deal to be made. You know, like you didn't meet up with somebody and go like, hey, bro, I'm going to like have kids. So can we sign a contract with the kids saying like I might not be responsible? No. You are solely responsible for them, you and the other parent. So you should 100% be contouring your day, your your life around these particular people until they turn 18 and maybe even after that. So if one of those things is not involving getting healthier, like how many, look, I know I've been in situations where I've been or I've been around people that had parents that were very unhealthy, constantly in and out of the hospital, and the kids had to pick up tons of responsibility where they shouldn't have. Things that, like, 
me and you wouldn't have to do. Like if you're 10 years old going to the grocery store, having to go to buy groceries and shit like that at 10 years old, it's probably not the best. Or like you're setting your kid up for all this stuff. And I'm not saying responsibility isn't good. Obviously, I think it is. But having needless responsibility be seated upon the kid because you physically cannot do it. That is, in my opinion, not good to be setting your kids up for all this responsibility when you know you could have done it yourself by losing weight or becoming healthier. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. A kid's job is to be a kid, you know? Like, as they get older, obviously, they should have more responsibility. Like, 10, 11, 12, 13, as they start getting to these ages, you should give them more responsibility. But if your kid's, like, 10 years old and the mom can't get out of bed because she's so fat and the kid has to go to the grocery store and go fucking food shopping and shit like that, it's not good. It's not good, dude. That's terrible. Setting I'm your kids committed up for failure. to living now. Like, there oh. isn't... Is that living though? Is it living, dude, to have a debilitating? All right, man, whatever. Space for an eating disorder if I'm gonna exist in the world. And I think that was a real shift for I've never, me. I've never heard this before in my life. Like I, I chose to have kids, so I choose to stay obese. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes a lot of fucking sense, dude. This is a, this is where these people's lo logics is, bro. Can you imagine going two plus two equals like a foot? Like, that's what I'm hearing right now. Like, there's no math. There's no math at all. Because anybody else would have did 2 plus 2 equals I got to get healthy for my kids. I want to ensure that I'm always there for them. I don't want to I don't want to have to resp I don't want to have to put my responsibility on these kids and have them take care of me. Instead, I am going to be the one that takes care of them because ultimately I chose to have these kids. I was the one that made this decision, not them, because they didn't choose this shit. I did. So I am going to take care of them as opposed to me taking care of them. And here's the thing. I don't know if she's – look, I'm not saying that she has them doing things for her. I'm not saying that. But I've seen tons of documentaries and tons of times where kids are are taking care of their fat parents because they can't get out of bed. They can't do anything. Like we did it. We did that that one episode on – what is that? Super size, super fat, and super skinny, right? Dude, these kids are taking care of of their parents because their parents can't get out of bed, they can't walk, they can't go anywhere, the kids have to do it all now. And I'm not saying it's inherently a bad thing. Obviously, it's okay if kids have to do stuff, but if you're if, if if there's no other reason to do it other than you literally cannot, that's not good. And you had the ability to choose otherwise and you had the ability to lose weight and you just still didn't, it's not good. It's not good. It's terrible. And it doesn't mean that everything magically got easy or there wasn't still a lot of struggle. Yeah, I bet, dude. But it was a different kind of struggle because there was a commitment to life that I did. Bro, I'm sick. I don't know why. I, I, it's like so cringy to hear like there's a commitment to life while this woman is talking about literally pursuing unhealthy behaviors and have while before. having while having kids. Oh, that just totally brought tears to my eyes. This host, dude, this fucking host is bad. It's so bad, dude. I, I, I'm sorry, dude. This host is like on some different level of cringe. What do you mean it brought a tear to That's your eye? so beautiful. And so I sat down with myself and I said, okay, self, <laughs> Cammy self, I want to fall in love with this. I want to be so okay with this that if my body never changes, that I am perfectly happy. You should be okay with the change. Like you should acknowledge that things are going to happen to you and have responsibility for yourself. But you shouldn't like look at things about yourself and go, can I change this? Yes. Is it negatively affecting me? Yes. Is it something I could change right now and it would be beneficial for me? Yes. Should I change this? Nope. Not going to do it. That's what I'm hearing. But I think most of the time when I hear these people talk about this type of stuff, they're not looking at it as things that are like, issues to be solved. They're just kind of looking at it as, yes, these are problems, but fuck it. There's nothing I can do about it, even though I know there's something to do about it. That's what I'm hearing. So... They're like boxing themselves into this never-ending Ouroboros of having problems and they thinking that there's nothing they can do about it even though there is something they can do about it. And so I went on this journey and- It's I always a journey, right? It's always like, oh, I went on this journey. I went on this quest. I went on this like life trail. A list of different activities that I could do to help me find my love, find my joy for this new fat body that I was experiencing. What do you mean new fat body? Can you imagine turning 30 and going, oh yeah, I'm fucking gaining weight. I'm gaining weight and I'm eating more. This is just me now. It's just me now. Oh, you, oh, what, you, what, what? Oh, go to the gym? Go to the gym and lose weight? Oh, eat less? Fat phobia. Fat phobia. Gross. Gross fat phobia. How dare you? How, this is my new fat body. It's my second puberty. Don't you know? I'm just naturally fat. That's just what it, oh, I wasn't fat for like my entire 20s. Fat phobia. Fat, this is what my body's set point was. I was just eating less than I, my body should have been eating. So it, it's not my fault. Not my fault. Not my fault. Not my fault. Your fault. Your fault. Your, your fault. 
I'm fat phobia, fat phobia, fat phobia. And like one of the things I did was I printed off a lot of photos of other fat bodies that were similar to mine. It's not normal. It's, that's not normal. I'm sorry to say that. That, that. That's cringy, right? What are you talking about? When, it, when has it ever been okay to ever say, so I was printing out other pictures of fat bodies for inspiration for me. Okay. Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah. Not weird, right? No. Fatter than mine um, from people that I was following on social media. And I like made a collage and hung it on my bathroom wall. Dude, that's fucking in your bathroom wall. Can you imagine coming? Oh my God, dude. Can you imagine like meeting this girl on Tinder and being like, Hey, um, I have to pee. Can I use your bathroom real quick? Oh yeah. It's like right down the hall. It's like right there. It's like right there down the hall. Go ahead. And then you're like, oh, okay, thanks. And you go in there and you close the door and you turn around and there's just a fucking collage of like Jordan Underwood, Tess Holiday, fucking Amberlynn Reed. And you're just like, what the fuck is this? What is going on here? What the hell? In the bathroom of all places? Why the bathroom? Why not a closet? Or like a fucking a room that nobody's ever going to be in a bathroom. So every time I have to go in and take a shit, I have to look at big ass pictures of Tess Holiday in your fucking bathroom. What the hell? You Why? Uh, she must never have anybody over, dude. That's fucking cringy as shit. What? Why big? Why people bigger than you? From people that I was following on social media, and I like made a collage and hung it on my bathroom wall. Cringe. And to see the beauty and to celebrate. While you're taking a shit? What are you talking about? Where was this? You're over here taking a big ass, just taking a giant shit. And you're just like, oh my God. That shit looks so good. All that, pfft, oh yeah, that's it. That's it right there. I love Tess Holiday. Oh, so beautiful. You know, the way this body looks. In the bathroom. Another thing I did was I followed a lot of fat activists and plus size influencers. On what I'm hearing is that what you're basically doing is you're indoctrinating yourself. So that way you never have to look at the alternative side of things. Okay, yeah. On social media and just like unfollowed anybody who is sharing things that made me feel gross. About yeah, that's not. That's not right, dude. What what you're basically saying is that I have put myself in a bracket. I put myself in the spectrum of never having anybody push against me, never having outside opinions, so I can never test if my opinions are correct. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have everybody else around me who is going to continuously tell me, yes, queen, yes, queen. And it's never going to negatively affect me, even though it is negatively affecting me in a very tremendous way. I'm just not, I'm just not seeing the effects of it right now. And it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. The indoctrination, the personal indoctrination that is, is going to be so beautiful. By the way, don't worry about the toilet paper on the wall. That was an accident. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. really filled my feed with like, oh, this is like, this is normal. It's not normal. That's complete. That's fucking crazy. Everything that you just said, everything you just said is like the plot of a serial killer movie. Not cool. Not cool, dude. It didn't sound this right. This is what humans look like. This yeah. is okay. No, I mean, that's fine if you think that, bro, but... And it's brutal out there. You know, it's brutal. You go to a restaurant, and you're like, where do I sit? What do I do? Who's gonna... You know, it's just like, it's a lot of extra mental load, and it's... Yeah. It could be so why don't you... Why don't you, like, not have it then? Like, you're, you're going to restaurants and going like, damn, is this seat even big enough for me? Can I even really fit in this seat? And then you're going, it's just, it's just so much responsibility now that... You know, the society probably puts this on me. You don't have to be fat. I don't know why you people act like this shit is like a a non thing, like a thing that you cannot do anything about. Be harmful, and so, you know, maybe you don't like. I just don't do as much as I used to out oh. in the world, but. <laughs> I also love having company, right? Like I mm -hmm. love doing things with other people. And so I was like, my house is really comfortable right now. I've spent yeah. some time and investment making my house really comfortable. That brings me joy. Yeah. And now I'm like, I should just have people here. Yeah. You're telling me. <laughs> so you, so you couldn't fit in chairs outside. You couldn't participate in outside activities. So you decided the solution would be. <laughs> create like a room or like your house that's accommodating for you and invite people over so like what, what if something happened like what if you needed to go outside you're just fucked you just can't do shit like it's just over for you like the world is not made for you right you're just literally setting everything <laughs> what is going on right now bro these people are literally talking about shit and they're going i set myself up for failure and I'm literally contouring my life for that failure. But if anything ever happened ever, I'm fucked. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing from these people. 
How can you how can you live like this without making any changes? Oh, I can't go outside anymore because I can't sit down. I'll break chairs. So I just make chairs myself that can fit me and I invite people over. I don't want to come over your house with your oversized chairs and then have you complain for 45 minutes about how you can't fit in chairs outside. Yes. Then I don't have to navigate that. Like I know my bathroom is my best. My yeah. couch is where, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I got new dining room chairs that will fit all, you know. Oh, oh. It's so bad. It's so gross. It's so nasty to say like, oh, I can't fit in chairs, but I know if I go home, I can fit on the toilet. What are you talking about? What? That's ridiculous. That's craziness. That's so crazy. You're sitting here literally like bragging that you, you have chairs that can fit you, but nowhere else they can fit you. That's not normal. That's not right. Duh. Duh. Uh, anybody chairs where you know what I mean? Like I got oh. new dining room chairs that will fit all you know uh, anybody I can think of. You know you know what yeah. I mean? And so it's like yeah. it's just um gross. It's that's that's where it should end. It's just gross. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I don't even know why I'm coming up with these solutions to these problems that can literally be alleviated by losing weight. Instead, I'm just gonna buy like 10 10x chairs and bathrooms that can. Dude, the fact that she said like, oh, I know I could fit in my bathroom. What the fuck? What? Why should that ever be a sentence you say? Uh, anybody I can think of, you know, you know what yeah. I mean? And so it's like, yeah. it's just, um, just thinking about our capacity and being okay yeah. with it changing, right? Which is, uh, 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 uh. you don't have to though. You don't have to be like this. You don't have to be fat. You don't have to buy oversized furniture. You don't have to. You can just lose the weight. And I know it's not as simple as just lose the weight, but it's got to be a whole lot simpler than going through the Ikea section, the XXXXX large, and hoping, hopefully the guy that's delivering it has an oversized back that can, like, lift up the 80 pounds of fucking furniture that you're going to have to lift up the fucking stairs. Jesus Christ, woman. She's also rebellious because that's anti-capitalist, anti-hustle culture, anti-toxic productivity. Oh. All the antis make me very happy. Yes. It's so nasty. You know, I've had to get to a certain place in my own healing that I'm not going to look at a photo and judge somebody else's body. What? Oh, man, dude. Are we just like, we just like reached the point where we just like deny attraction. Like, oh, yeah, my girlfriend sent me a picture of her naked, but I'm not going to judge her for that. Even though I'm like seriously bricked up. That's not because of that. It's because I was looking out the window and I saw some wood. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's it. That's uh, I can't I can't judge my girlfriend based off her physical appearance anymore. I can't you can't judge your husband. You can't judge anybody based off of how they can look anymore. Even if you are attracted to them. Fuck that shit. You're wrong for that. For finding attraction. Wrong. And the practice of like processing a photo session is so joyful. And I know Dude, what's the what's the point of taking photos if you're not looking at that going like, yeah, that's a good photo. That's a pretty. Uh, oh, wow. Look at that. That's a nice photo. What's the point? You might as well just not even be taking pictures then if that's the point. Like, what What are you doing if you're not looking at them and judging them? What are you doing then? What are you like? Okay, whatever, bro. Sometimes photos might be challenging for people. Um, especially, you know, the way I, I don't really pose people. I just ask them to move their way. Um, what? But they are truly coming from a place of love with me. What? Uh, and seeing their incredible body through the lens. These, these people are fucking weird. I, I've never seen people talk like this before in my entire life. And they do it so confidently. They do it as if, like, this is just normal lingo. You're speaking very weirdly. And their incredible selves. And um, so I really feel like I I provide that neutral space where people can feel safe. But when they're also – whereas where they can also feel, um, yeah, that I'm seeing them – without judgment what and if i do see their body with judgment that's my my crap but i i don't really it's it's like it feels like a very what does that even mean like oh yeah they know they can come to me and i won't be judging them but if i do judge them that's my fault i know i i know it's your fault what, what? yeah okay so like what so like you're so i'm coming to you so you don't judge me, which doesn't make any sense because you're taking photos, which I don't even understand why I'm literally coming to you to take photos and you're not telling me whether or not the photo is correct or not. Like, bro, what the fuck are you? If I take a photo with you and I got my, my, my gut hanging out in the wrong spot and I, I don't want it to look like that, you're just not going to tell me it's wrong? Okay, whatever. And then you're telling me that I'm not, I'm not going to get judged by you, which seems irrelevant 
Okay, whatever. You're not going to judge me even though that's the entire fucking point of the session. And then when I take the photo, you tell me that you're not going to judge me. But then you just told me that you might judge me. And then if, if you do judge me, it's your fault, which is fuck all to me. That doesn't mean anything to me because I'm coming to you so you don't judge me. But you're telling me you still are going to judge me. So what the fuck am I even coming to you for? None of this shit makes sense. Good place when I'm processing photos. Yeah. It's like Wow, oh, you're- oh, I just fucking- Who is this woman, dude? Why you- Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what? She just said something crazy. She just said something crazy and you're not saying anything back. It's it's like- It feels like a very sacred place when I'm processing photos. Yeah. Like, wow, oh, you're amazing. And <laughs> we have outtakes. We have outtakes when we take photos. We have outtakes when in a photo session, there's photos I'm not going to send you because you're kind of blinking and you yeah. don't need that. So you are judging. So you're judging. So you're judging that those photos of her blinking are not good. <laughs> Photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. I'm just looking for the ones that, that, um, that help you shine. How do you know they, how do you know that they make me shine if you're not judging them? What the fuck are you talking about? What is going on? Man. Shut up. Shut up, dude. That, uh, no, there's nothing else I can say about that. Get the fuck out of here. You tell me you're not going to judge them while telling me that you might judge me, but you're never going to judge me, but you're judging the photos based off of how they look. Okay. All right, dude. Whatever, man. I don't, I mean, I don't even understand this job profession, dude. What the fuck is that? Okay. <laughs> Am I wrong? Am I dumb? Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're going to end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, um, I appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe. Sharing the video, all those things help me grow in the algorithm. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in photo because you deserve to take photos and you deserve to look good in your photos, obviously. But don't get me wrong. If you take a photo and you got a booger hanging out of your nose, it's okay to take that photo and judge that photo. But oh, yeah. Oh, damn. I got a booger hanging out. I'll take it again. You know, I'll just take it again. Take it. Take it again. Now, that's okay. That's all right. It's okay to judge yourself. Because you're making the proper judgment sometimes, right? You know, don't overjudge yourself. Don't say like, I'm ugly, I'm disgusting, I smell like Sasquatch nuts. That's not good. Don't say that. Unless you do smell like Sasquatch nuts, then you're making the correct assumption. But it's okay to judge. It is okay to judge because it's a natural aspect of human life, okay? So don't feel bad for judging yourself or other people. It's a human trait that is okay to have, all right? I judge you every day. And I look at you and I go... What an outrageously beautiful, amazing, delicately awesome, well-lubricated person. Wow, you look really good today. Can I real quick smell your hair? <sighs> oh, man. That smelled good. That smells so delicious. <sighs> what kind of uh, conditioner? What kind of conditioner is that? That smells really good. <sighs> anyway, um, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check my social media, it'll be linked down below. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter, and Discord. If you want to follow me on Discord, you can. I'm in the chat sometimes. We talk. We do things. We communicate. We have a whole bunch of stuff going on there. So if you want to join up, join up. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 